was watching this video the other day on YouTube. Um, it's set in 19... well, it's not set in 1964, it is in 1964. And it's called The Kid Who Wouldn't Conform. It's about a couple of teenage girls who long for more interesting lives than their parents have. And I think they all come from towns of the north where, you know, you slaved for a, a really tough job just to hopefully keep a roof over your head and food on the table, and that was your life. And, you know, teenagers have always wanted to break free from the norms. I, you know, I always wanted to break out from what was considered normal. You know, going to school every day, doing what you were told, then going on to college uh, and then getting a job or whatever else it was. I always wanted that freedom. Um, I definitely did it the wrong way. I didn't do it the way I should have done. I always think that education and money will help you to have those freedoms. Um, so I didn't really have either in the end and ended up working in offices doing exactly what I was trying to get away from because I had bills to pay. And I've always longed for that different lifestyle and it wasn't until I was 35 that I was able to start making some changes. And had an opportunity to go to uni, did that full time for three years, didn't have to work. I was very lucky that I'd been able to uh, kind of deal with that. And since then, I've been predominantly self-employed, which at least means I have autonomy in my work. But I don't earn as much, so I don't have the freedoms to go and do the things that I thought I would always do, like explore more, travel, do a job that I loved rather than because it was for the money. And although I still get to do the job I love, not for the money, because frankly it doesn't pay very much, and at least the side hustles I have mean that I still have quite a lot of free time to myself. It enables me to explore creativity in other ways, like YouTube. It means that days like today where it's really nice, I can jump in the car and go out hiking on the hills if I want to. I can still do those things, but in a wider sense, nothing really changes. And I was thinking about this yesterday because it dawned on me that as of recording this, we are now in the middle of May. We are halfway through 2024 and I have no idea what I have done with my year beyond chase money. And I know that I needed to do that because I needed get, to get back to a, a secure base level where I was then able to have something to build on. So, you know, sorting out retirement funds, and I know everyone goes, oh, don't worry about retirement, just, just live your life. But they are things that you do need to consider. So I've got those two things in place, and I can now afford to put into those. And I've been able to stay out of having to go back to uh, either a nine-to-five or a regular part-time job working in an office or whatever, because I've worked hard on the side hustles. And it still gives me the freedom. So the only job that I have which requires me to be somewhere at a certain time on a regular basis is the cleaning work. But it's only eight and a half hours a week of my life. So I still have plenty of time to go and do things like car camping and go out for days when the weather's nice and play around with creativity and do what I like. So I'm still, I know that I'm still really lucky compared to a lot of people. And of course it's come with its sacrifices. I've had to downsize my life a lot, which is absolutely fine. I don't mind that. Um, I don't want for anything. I have all my needs. Um, I'm not starving. Um, I'm, I, I don't feel that like I go without at all even though I don't spend a lot of money. So my bills this year look like they're coming in at around about 12,000. I am earning more than that, therefore I'm quids in. If you're earning more than you have to spend, then you're laughing, aren't you? I don't want for expensive holidays. I don't want for takeaways, pub nights out, uh, weekend city breaks. Um, I don't want to upgrade my car. So I have everything that I need to live my life the way I want to. And it's taught me some very good mindful things about not being wasteful and about being more considerate about how you do things and how you fit into the world. But I realise that if I don't keep an eye on things, the second half of this year is going to be much like the first and I'm going to get to the end of this year and say, okay, so what have I done with my year? 
how has this been better? And all I can say is, I started a pension, I started a Stocks and Shares ISA, and I worked hard on my YouTube channel. And that's all money related, and that's the point, is that you're supposed to be getting away from that. And to a certain extent I have, I don't consider myself part of the rat race, I've managed to remove myself from most of the things that people get saddled by when it comes to money. You know, they get into this cycle of spending more money than they earn. But I don't know whether I should just let this year just continue to build and then make next year the amazing year. Amazing year, I don't know what, because I'm not going to be able to go travelling. I'm not going to be able to move. Whatever I do that is different or better or enriches my life is going to have to happen from my doorstep to a certain extent. So I haven't found the inspiration for that yet, really. I mean, I could go and do more car camping trips, great. That's one night of no sleep in my car while I look around towns that my ancestors lived in. Um, and they're fun and they're nice and I love them. But it's not the same as, you know, like having a camper van travelling around the country. Which won't happen either because I don't have the infrastructure to be able to do that. Um, so I need more inspiration. I need to think about how that changes. Because when I look back over all the years that I've been living where I am now... And how much has changed and how much hasn't. And it's all very much geared around how much money I have or don't have. And at the end of the day, when you know it comes to the crunch, money is the thing that will give you those freedoms, provided you make it work in your favour. So I, if I doubled my income, I would have more freedom, but I wouldn't be spending more money. I wouldn't say, oh, well, you know, I'm only two grand more a year. I'm going to get broadband or Netflix, and then I'll be tied to that. I would say, great, I have this extra money. Let's go and, I don't know, let's go and travel Scotland, but I can stay in B&Bs. I'm going to do a combination of B&Bs and sleeping in my car or something. And let's do that for three months or something like that. I don't know. It's just a thing I plucked out of nowhere. But I don't, still don't have enough infrastructure for that. That requires me... I mean, I could just grab two grand out of my savings and just blow it on something like that. But I'm still playing the cautious game. Because my income is going to go down again next year. And I need to work out how I am going to improve that. So I'm still, even though I am free of a lot of financial things that people get stuck with, I am not free. I am not free to do whatever I want. I am not free to live the life that I would actually want to live. So, sorry, that was a fly, a big blue bottle buzzing around. I opened the window in a minute. Um, so yeah, it's just my thoughts on, I need inspiration. What do you do to make... The routine of days more interesting even if you're not doing a nine to five or maybe you are i don't know what do you do that just uplifts each day or each week or each month and makes you think this is this is really worth it i would really like to know what it is you do that helps keep you sane drop me a line i'd really like to hear about that <laughs>